Marcus Rashford gets called out by big names. Roy Keane goes in on Manchester United. Fabrizio Romano confirms it's over between another Manchester United player who will join Sancho in those exiting in January. We've also got reliable reports linking us to Todibo and that Bundesliga striker with a £50 million release clause. And we've got a few other news updates on Mayno, problems within the squad and more. So hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football. Welcome back to the latest video. We're going to start by getting right into the takeover latest with news coming out that potentially the takeover could be today. Maybe there could be an announcement this afternoon, this evening. I mean, I highly doubt it because I just feel like it's going to be weeks until there's a bloody announcement. I feel like it would have been leaked by now. But the Mirror said that Ratcliffe and Brailsford are expected to begin work at Man United today. There's reports that there could be an announcement today, tomorrow, in the coming days. But they've been saying that for weeks. So I'm at the point where I'm just kind of like, meh, I don't know. And then we've also got a little bit of news about Ratcliffe and Greenwood. I don't really like to be talking about Greenwood now because I just feel like, well, we can come to this in April, May, towards the end of the season when his loan's over and all of this. Um, I think it's a bit of a pointless story. Uh, but it was said that Sergio Ratcliffe has not made a decision on bringing back Mason Greenwood yet. The idea is to take some time to let Greenwood play for Catafe where he's on loan. And then in 2024, March, April, May, the idea will be to discuss the position of Greenwood based on performances at Catafe and other factors. Manchester United want Greenwood to focus on Catafe, perform there, do the best on loan, then there's a possibility they'll decide the future. Um, so that is their plan. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought Mason Greenwood back. I think it was their plan to send him out on loan and clean up his act a bit and then bring him back. I think if he's good on loan, they'll find a way to bring him back. I think if he's bad on loan, they'll let him go. Um, I think that's it. I think Man United, what they're worried about is letting Greenwood go for free and then he goes to a Premier League rival. I think that's what United are thinking about more than actually mm, this could upset some people. Anyway, enough of the takeover news. I don't really want to talk about the takeover until it's just announced now. We know we're getting Ratcliffe. We know we're getting Blanc. We know we're getting this person. Just announce it. Just do it. Um, I don't know what it's going to be announced. Who knows? But Fabrizio Romano did a transfer update and he said today it is over between Manchester United and Donny van der Beek. He will leave in the January window. Romano's confirmed it is over. I don't think Donny will ever play for United again. I don't think Sancho will ever play for United again. Um, and it's over for them. And it's a shame because I think there was a chance that Donny could have revived his career under Eric Tenag. And I think we were all hoping for that. And then he played a few games and it looked OK. And then he got injured and he was out to the rest of the season. And I had a bit of sympathy for Donny because I thought he looked pretty decent in pre-season. I thought he actually had moments last season when he played where he was good. And then he had two or three good games and then he got injured. And I think he would have played a lot more with the injury to Ericsson and stuff. And, but he's not been available when he when we could actually use him. And the, the one or two times he would have started, he's not been available. He's, he's not been good enough. And I, I think Don is one of those. Why I, I feel bad calling him a flop because I never thought he got a fair chance. We signed him. He clearly wasn't in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plan. And I think, I hope he leaves. I hope he goes somewhere he gets game time. I hope he doesn't um, pick up injuries. But I think you know it's over when Ten Hag is preferring Dan Core. And Mesbury on the bench had a Donny. And I think there was a bit of frustration with Tenor because Donny did get offers to go on loan in the summer and he turned them down because he was hoping for Sociedad. Um, and then Sociedad were like, no. So then he had nowhere to go. And I think there was that frustration because Donny's head wasn't at United um, and Tenor thought he was going and then he ended up staying. Um, another name that United have been linked to consistently is John Claire Todibo. It says that he remains a candidate for Manchester United in January. A possible transfer for Todibo should not affect the potential signing of Antonio Silva, who's still a top signing in the summer. This is a Pletty goal, who's a decent source of information. United are very keen on Todibo. Um, obviously, the Ratcliffe links makes it easier. I think his price tag of £38 million pounds makes him affordable. I think if we can raise a bit of money in January, I wouldn't be totally surprised if we went for Todibo, especially considering reports and rumours that Ratcliffe Rafael Ram could be leading Manchester United and Tenor clearly wanted Todibo in the summer. Um, I think Todibo in January could happen, but I think it would depend on if we raise money uh, for outs or not. And I think another deal in January that could happen is obviously Girassi, who's been really good this season. It's a big risk because he's, this is his first season where he's been like, wow, like you've been good. And there are other teams in for him, but 15 million release clause, we want someone to sort of help out Hoyland. But the way that Martial and Tenog were arguing at each other yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised if Tenog was open to bringing in another striker to bring Hoyland. In fact, he's always been open to bringing another striker to bring another striker to help Hoyland because of Martial's injury record. Now, 
talking of Martial, we're going to talk about someone else that needs to be called out, Marcus Rashford. And it looks like Marcus Rashford is finally being called out for his poor work rate. Now, I'm a big Marcus Rashford fan. I was not one of those people that wanted him sold. I've always backed Rashford. I know how good he can be when he's in form, but I know how bad he can be when he's not in form. And no matter how bad you are, there's no excuse for not trying. And this is where I criticise Rashford. Brilliant at inform, awful out of form. Think he's a good player. Want him to get back in form. I think he's got a big future at United. But what I can't excuse is his work rate. And he needs to be called out for it. And Roy Keane has ripped into Rashford with some hard truths here. And I think Roy Keane is spot on. He's 26. He's not a child anymore. He's got a mega deal now. Huge money. He's got to run more than anybody. United fans are frustrated because he doesn't run. Um, he said he must lead by example. He's one of the most experienced players in the locker room. And if he doesn't lead by example, it's not good. And it's true. He's not tracking back. He's one of the most experienced girls in the locker room. He's one of the highest paid. And it's like he doesn't want to be there. I, I don't know what it is. It's just like he doesn't want to be there. Apparently, he was annoyed that he had to play striker at the beginning of the season. Apparently, he's annoyed that he's had to play right wing. You've not been good enough on the left wing. Like, it's just frustrating. Like, get on with it. Because when I compared Rashford's work rate to Aaron and Gordon's against Newcastle, Night and day. It was it was embarrassing. I love Rashford. I'm a big fan of Rashford. I, I'm not one people one of the people who calls him Trashford. But this work rate, you cannot excuse that. His effort, you cannot excuse that. He needs to give a hundred percent. He needs to act like he gives a crap. He acts like he's he's more he acts like he doesn't care. And and, and that and that's what hurts me. Um, Alan Shearer, I thought was really good with his comments on match of the day. He made some really good comments about United. And Alan Shearer said for me. There are too many bad eggs in that Man United team, too many bad attitudes. In, their, in the Man United defence, they got no help whatsoever from Garnacho and Rashford. Rashford didn't look at all interested. It happened so many times. Newcastle created so many chances and should have had so many goals. And he's right, there were so many times where I could watch back that Newcastle game and you could see Rashford going for a dribble, getting tackle and... Uh, I mean, like I think Garnacho trapped back a bit and I think Garnacho was fine. But I think Rashford, he looked disinterested. His body language... That was what was wrong, the, the body language of Rashford. He looked so uninterested. And he's had a week off because he didn't have to go to Galatasaray. And Almoron and Gordon have had to play against PSG and work their socks off. But yeah, Almoron and Gordon are still working their socks off. And there's no excuse for Marcus Rashford. He needs to step up. He needs to be on the bench. He needs to be benched for his own good. But he also needs to be benched to send a message to the squad. If you're not good enough, you're benched. That's why Ten Hag won over the squad last season, because he benched McFred and he benched Maguire within a few games to go with his game plan, which worked. We've got results. He's now gone back to McTominay. He's now gone back to Maguire. And Rashford is now playing, but he's crap. He needs to bench Rashford. He needs to bench McTominay. Maguire's fine because he's good. But if Rashford's been poor and McTominay's been poor, he needs to bench them and let the other players have a chance, because then maybe he could win back the squad. That's just my opinion as well. And another news to sort of end off today's show, um, it was said that Kobe Maynard is under contract at Man United until 2027 and the club have an option to extend until 2028. If Maynard's progress improves, United could prepare to open talks in the near future about his salary and give him what he deserves. I think considering we've still got another few years on this deal, I would look maybe um, towards next year to actually give him a new contract. I think we don't want to rush into new contracts. Um, he's got three years. I'll, I'll generally wait at least a year before we consider a new contract. It was like with Lissandra Martinez, we almost gave him a new contract last year, even though he just signed a five-year deal. And we almost gave him a new contract and an extension. Then he got injured. It's like, well, give Martinez a new contract when he's got two years left. You know, not not when we've got four years left, because you just don't know where the player will be in four years. Injury prone, high wages. And, and I'm a big fan of Martinez and I'm a big fan of Maino, but we'll wait until we're near 2027 to give them a new contract. And then obviously something I'm not a big fan of was this. Steve McLaren had to wait uh, at the top of the tunnel to tell some Man United players to turn around and applaud the travelling fans. In my opinion, that's an absolute disgrace. I think these players need to have a look in the mirror. They need to realise that we've had to go through a lot, us fans. We're always there for them. And those fans travelled up to Newcastle in the freezing cold, in minus one, two degrees temperature, cheered you on all game and, and you put in a performance, but you didn't try. And then you don't thank the fans. And look, we can criticise Ten Hag. Ten Hag, his tactics haven't been good enough, but the attitude of the players is really bad at this club and, and, and that needs sorting out massively, massively, massively. Anyway, please do smash that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Let me know your thoughts on all the news down below. Thank you for watching today's video. I'll see you next time. Bye.